today we're going to taste these 10 ready to drink espresso martinis from the cheapest to the most expensive. We're going to answer two questions. Number one, do they get better as they get more expensive? And number two, can they compete with a freshly made espresso martini in terms of quality and value? So let's find out. All right, welcome back to the Coffee Cocktail Channel, everyone. I'm Dan Fellows. And today we're gonna to taste these 10 espresso martinis. And these are all about convenience, so we've brought them out of the studio. I'm gonna taste each one, evaluating four things. Number one, visually, does it look like a freshly made espresso martini? Do you get that really nice kind of cascading look to the drink when you pour it from your shaker? Number two, does it have that delicious texture, that creamy, velvety, almost moussey like mouthfeel, which has that kind of Guinness-like cascade when you pour it and drink it for the first time? And does that continue throughout the drink? Number three, is the espresso martini well balanced? And does it do a really good job of celebrating the coffee that's at the heart of it, using the other ingredients to kind of elevate it, rather than being overpowered by the other ingredients or losing the coffee within there or being far too sweet, which often you find in these ready to drink cocktails. And then number four, when it comes to the coffee quality, can you taste it? And do you get any of the inherent qualities of the coffee in there, which you can clearly taste in the drink? So what we're gonna do is I'll also show you the ABV and the price per serve, which I'm allowing for 100 mils per serve for this. So you've got an idea of how strong these are and how much they cost. And we're going to take our winner, so our favorite from all of these, back to the studio and then taste it compared to a freshly made espresso martini to see if it really can stand up against a freshly made homemade espresso martini. So without further ado, let's try our cheapest ready to drink espresso martini, which is the Funkin. All right, so first of all, we've got the Funkin. And this is an interesting one because it's by far the cheapest, but also the lowest ABV, which probably have a lot to do with each other. So this only has a 5% ABV which is much, much lower than you expect from most espresso martinis. Again, that might be why it's so cheap, but we shall see. And this is an espresso martini nitro cocktail. So slightly different to the other ones in that this is infused with nitrogen. So we'll see how this tastes. In terms of the ingredients, we have a barista blend of the finest cold brew coffee, a hint of vanilla and a kick of premium vodka. So pretty simple basis. Obviously cold brew is an interesting choice, which I think we'll see a lot today. And they recommend chilling, cracking it open to infuse with nitrogen or you can serve it in a martini glass for the full bar experience. So this is nicely chilled. Let's crack it open and then pour this into a martini glass. So we'll see how this looks. It looks kind of murky. Definitely doesn't have that nice kind of rich cascading Guinness look. Well, to a point but not how you'd expect from an espresso martini, which is much more persistent. You do have the nice kind of white foam on top of the drink, which gives me hope. So let's give this one a try. Cheers, everyone. Whoa, that's so sweet. Very sweet up front. Uh, visually, we've spoken about, but texturally, it does have quite a nice texture, kind of like that nitro cold brew type thing. But it's almost got the almost artificial creamy you find on a lot of pods and it's just extremely sweet. So balance wise, the coffee's really lost because it's so, so sweet. You get a lot of the vanilla coming through, but not necessarily the most natural vanilla flavor. And the coffee, I can't tell you much about it. I can barely taste it. It's just like sweet vanilla chocolate. So not the strongest of starts. Let's move on to number two. So next up we have Fridays, and this is made by the kind of bar restaurant train called TGI Fridays, who you might have heard of, who famously do a lot of cocktails, and we'll see whether this is a high quality one. So ingredient wise, this is an interesting list. We have vanilla vodka, coffee liqueur, vanilla liqueur, and espresso. So a lot of these won't have espresso in because it's tricky to kind of work with. So we'll see how that comes through with the double vanilla in there as well. And they recommend chill well, which we've done. Shake the bottle hard for 10 seconds before decanting into a chill martini glass. So let's shake this bottle for 10 seconds. And now to can into our martini glass. So is this gonna look like an espresso martini? Whoa, <laughs> no, not at all. It looks like iced tea, interestingly. There's literally no foam, no crema on there at all. They say this contains espresso, which I'm struggling to believe. Looks very thin. Doesn't look like an espresso martini as I know it, but I might well be proven wrong. Let's give this a taste. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's like butterscotch, vanilla. Really doesn't arrive straight away, but it comes in straight after. 
It's just so thin. You can't honestly call this an espresso martini. To say there's espresso in here, I'm pretty shocked by. But visually, I'm gonna say poor. Texturally, not like an espresso martini. It's not bad, just super thin, super watery. More like a sort of thin juice-like texture, like cranberry juice. Again, a bit too sweet, not like painfully sweet. You've got that synthetic butterscotchy flavor in there. And then you've also got a little bit too much sweetness, but not like crazy amounts too much. And then coffee-wise, I can barely taste it, honestly. So I would say this is a little, no, this is worse than the Funkin. So they're not getting better as they get more expensive yet, but hopefully the next one will be a step in the right direction. So let's do that now. All right, so next up we have Tails, and this really does look like a step in the right direction. We've got 42 Below Vodka in here from New Zealand, which is really delicious. We have 42 Below Vodka, Coffee Liqueur, and Premium Espresso Coffee, which is interesting word, and we'll see this a few times. Does that mean coffee roasted for espresso? Or does it mean coffee brewed as espresso and then added to the drink? So I'm not 100% sure, but they recommend this one, you shake with ice, add the garnish for the perfect cocktail moments. So let's have a perfect cocktail moment, hopefully. I'm gonna shake this one up. What a lovely day. I'm gonna assume they want us to fine strain this into our glass. Oh yes. Visually, for the first time, this looks like an espresso martini, which is good times. So let's give this one a try. Straight away, visually looks fantastic. Got the nice authentic kind of foam on there that you get with an espresso martini. It's not super white, which is nice. It's got a bit of kind of creamy brown to it, which implies that this texture is from the coffee rather than from the nitrogen. Let's give it a taste. It feels much more like an espresso martini. Got that like Guinness-like texture. There's a very distinctive flavor in there that's amaretto. There's no ingredient that implies it should taste like almonds, but that really tastes like amaretto. In terms of balance, this is actually pretty good. It's definitely not crazy sweet. It does have sweetness in there, but it actually supports the other ingredients. It is a bit distractingly amaretto-y, but there's plenty of coffee in there. Amaretto and coffee work quite nicely together. So I'd say it's pretty well balanced. And the coffee is of a pretty good quality. If there's a tiny bit of kind of woodiness in there, but I think I'm being a bit nitpicky. At this price point, this seems like really good value. So let's see if we continue the upward trajectory with our next espresso martini. All right, so next up we have the Moth Espresso Martini. And I've had a few Moth products before and been really impressed actually. They've been well-balanced, quality kind of ingredient-driven drinks, and hopefully this is no different. So this contains vodka, cold brew, and coffee liqueur. No espresso, so I'm told. So we'll see how this tastes. And in terms of the instructions, we have shake, squeeze, enjoy. So I guess that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna shake. They've left a little bit of headroom in the can so you can shake it quite nicely. Nice touch. This is pre-chilled as well because we want a nice cold espresso martini. When they say squeeze, I'm not really sure. Maybe that's what you need to do. And then, oh, bit of fizz. I am gonna pour this into a glass so you can see the texture. I think maybe instructions to have Shaking this with ice might have been better, but I do understand the convenience of doing this in the can. So it's got a bit of a large bubbly surface and it doesn't have that cascade we'd find before, but the kind of hiss makes me think there's probably some kind of nitrogen in there. Don't think it's gonna be fizzy. So this is the Moth Espresso Martini. Oh wow, way thicker than I expected, way thicker. This has got far more body than anything we've tried before. It doesn't have the smoothness of texture, but it does have a really positive texture. Kind of good depth of flavor. In terms of the balance, I'd say this is very well balanced. You've got a really nice kind of level of sweetness. It does elevate the coffee. Maybe there's a little bit too much sweetness, but again, being a little bit nitpicky. And then the coffee itself is definitely pleasant and definitely present. The sweetness does elevate it, but I think it's probably a little bit of a darker roast, which makes sense, dark roast and sugar. But overall, this is pretty well balanced. Got the real depth and richness that you expect from espresso martini with a boozy kick coming through as well. So I really like this. I think this is now, again, better than the last one. Although I do think if we shook this over ice and strained it, it'd be better again, because you've got enough body to play with and you'd take down the intensity a little bit, which I think would be quite a good thing. So quite impressive. Let's keep going. 
All right, so next up we have British icon Marks and Spencers, the Marxologist Espresso Martini Cocktail, which they've highlighted Madagascan vanilla, which is kind of interesting. We'll see how prominent that is. And they say this is a luxurious twist on the Espresso Martini Cocktail with a rich, woody Bourbon vanilla character. I assume not bourbon, they mean Bourbon vanilla. And interesting ingredient list on this. So we have vodka, expected espresso coffee. Again, that interesting wording of whether they mean roasted for or brewed as. Coffee liqueur, maple syrup, which kind of makes sense. That's quite a nice ingredient to put in an espresso martini. Dark muscovado sugar, which I'm a big fan of, using different sugars to enhance different things. And if you use a dark sugar like that, it can maybe elevate the coffee. So we'll see how that goes. Madagascan vanilla extract and also bitters. So if they need bitters, maybe they're not using a super bitter coffee. And they recommend serve chilled, shake bottle well, and then decant into a shaker filled with cubed ice. Shake well and strain into a martini glass. So we're gonna do that. This looked like quite a dark color going in, which is potentially a good sign. This definitely looks like an espresso martini. Hopefully this is the trend now. And this has got that foamy, rich texture by the looks of it. I'm getting very excited by this. I think we might be in for a treat here. So this has a really kind of nice thick foam. Quite light in color on top, but the drink itself looks quite dark. So I'm interested to see how intense this is going to be. And yeah, texturally looks fantastic. Feels awesome. You've got that, ooh, that's quite nice actually. You've got the really kind of nice foamy texture. Very, cre like very creamy. This is by far the best so far. Surprisingly, actually. The Muscovado really elevates the drink. You've got that really nice creamy texture, which is really, really good. Balance-wise, I would say it's a little bit sweet, but I think the dark Muscovado is a very, very good choice. And the maple syrup also, you can taste in there quite clearly. Plenty of coffee flavor, plenty of booze. This is actually a higher ABV than some of the others, but by shaking it, you're gonna bring that down. I think straight out of the bottle, this might've been very intense, but recommending shaking it with ice is really positive. And then in terms of coffee quality, it's pretty good. I think I'm being fooled by the dark Muscovado because that kind of brings a rich sweetness to the drink. But, you know, the coffee quality ties into the rest of the drink. And that I think is really good. So again, we're going upwards in terms of price, upwards in terms of quality. And I am pretty impressed by that. This is not just an espresso martini. This is an M&S espresso martini. I shouldn't have said that. Let's do the next one. All right, so next up we have Clemson's and Sons Midnight Oil Espresso Martini. And if you don't know Clemson's, they're an amazing roaster based in East London. They're kind of one of the founding roasters of the London coffee movement who've been going since, I think, the mid 2000s, if not longer. Amazing roasters, amazing coffees, amazing people. And they've made this, which is Midnight Oil, a ready to shake espresso martini. So I took a few notes on this because I think there's some quite interesting things going on here. Number one, this is the first to specify the coffee in there. So this coffee is a Munda Novo natural process from uh, Deterra Estate in Brazil, which is a very famous, well-known coffee estate. Produced some amazing coffees, and the flavor notes they give of chocolate, hazelnut, and marzipan are fitting flavors for an espresso martini. Interestingly as well, the ingredients list is the natural process Munda Novo from Deterra, East London Liquor Company Vodka, who are producers of amazing spirits. We have a blend of aged rum, um, from Guyana and an unaged Caribbean light rum, as well as cacao, vanilla, and sugar. So some interesting seasonings going on there, some other flavors being added in. And I've tried Clemson's coffee liqueur in the past, and I think my feedback was the ingredients that are added don't necessarily need to be there because the coffee's so good. So I know a lot of people like cacao, vanilla, sugar, they're all delicious things, but this is great coffee in here. Let's see if this needs those other ingredients added. And in terms of how they've brewed the coffee, they say, We've developed a unique way of hot brewing and flash chilling our coffee for the espresso martini that utilizes several techniques that draw out and lock in the full spectrum of flavors and textures. So they recommend giving this a shake up over ice. So let's do that now and see how this one is. I'm excited by this. Looks really, really good. So texturally, looks banging. Looks like a fresh espresso martini. Got that nice cascade, thick layer of foam on this one. Let's give it a try. 
it's lighter than I expected. Texturally, we've got the nice creaminess, but it's like very light creaminess, if that makes sense. Pleasant, for sure, but it's quite a low intensity espresso martini. You've got a good balance in there. The sweetness is nice. The cacao comes through quite clearly. And I think rum is a good addition to this. However, the coffee in here is really good quality and I don't taste a huge amount of it. So knowing this coffee is delicious, I want more and more of that in my drink. And I don't think I get quite enough of it. So similar feedback to the coffee liqueur in that the other flavors kind of bring something to the drink, but whether they need to be there, I'm not sure. I think the lightness is something I'd want to see slightly change. I want more intensity, more weight, but it's really pleasant. Like the sweetness level is really good and it's a really tasty espresso martini. So more of the coffee, please, because the coffee is so, so good, but solid. You'll enjoy this. You just could get even more from banging coffee in there, but all in all, it's a winner. So really enjoy that. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so next up we have Black Lines. And um, Black Lines do some amazing things. Lots of ready to drink cocktails. All of the ones I've tried have been really, really delicious. And the espresso martini, potentially, could be equally delicious. We shall see. So in terms of the ingredients, we have vodka, espresso liqueur, which is interesting wording. And they talk about it on the website saying they worked for a really long time on this. And again, I don't know if that's brewed as espresso or roasted for espresso to make the liqueur. And then we have cold brew coffee from Origin Coffee Roasters based here in Cornwall, which in case you're wondering is where we are today. Also got a train going by, which is making it a bit noisy. But Origin are an amazing roastery. This is San Fermin from Colombia, which I know the coffee quite well. It's quite orangey, quite caramelly. And it'll be interesting to see if this comes through in the final drink. So again, they recommend chilling it prior to serving, pouring into a shaker, shaking for 15 seconds, and then straining into a coupe. So we're gonna do that now. Again, we're looking good. I'd expect all our espresso martinis to look like espresso martinis from this kind of price point onwards, and they seem to be doing that. Got really nice cascade. Again, really nice layer of foam. These are looking really nice. So let's give this one a taste. Tastes like an espresso martini, which is what we want. So you've got the really nice creamy texture. It's got enough intensity coming through and a really nice level of sweetness. And plenty of coffee flavor as well. It does come through as a almost like chocolatey orange kind of flavor. There's a bit of acidity in here, which is really, really nice, which we haven't really had up until this point. Very well balanced, really nice level of sweetness in there. It's not too sweet. If anything, I think shaking it with ice, because this one's 13% ABV, has brought down the intensity perhaps a little bit too far. I think if we had really, really hard frozen ice, give it a quicker shake and really almost froze this, which I think is one thing they do recommend on the website, putting it in the freezer for an hour before serving, I think you'd be in a really, really good place. So texturally, really creamy, if a little bit light. Balance, again, very well balanced, plenty of coffee flavor coming through. And the coffee, which is in there, is of really good quality with a little bit of the acidity, which is really, really nice. So I would say this is the best we've had so far. This is the Black Lines. And let's see if we can raise the bar any further. I'm gonna have another sip of this. It's tasty. All right, so next up, we've got Myatt's Fields from London. And this is quite an interesting one because they do say that this one contains espresso along with vodka and coffee liqueur. And although the website for Myatt's Fields doesn't say this, the Amazon description says this is coffee from Monmouth and it's hand-pulled espresso, which is, I think, a really good sign. That's what you want to see. When this is chilled, you do get a little bit of kind of separation and it's kind of murky, which implies that this is hand-pulled espresso, which is what we want. And I'm quite interested to try this. Serving wise, they recommend shaking this over ice hard for 30 seconds, which I think is perhaps too long. So you're going to get quite a high dilution on this. Although the 20% ABV and the potential freshly brewed espresso, or at least hand brewed espresso, could counteract that. So as with all these, I'm going to follow the instructions as closely as possible and shake this over ice for 30 seconds. Let's do that now. Hey Siri, start a timer for 30 seconds. Seems like a really long time. In the time it's taken to shake that espresso martini, it's literally started raining. The weather's completely changed. <laughs> but it looks good. It looks moussey. In fact, texturally, 
Looks awesome. So let's give it a taste. It's a really nice rainbow over there. That's actually really, really good. I'm really impressed by this. It's got a really nice creamy texture. Surprisingly, it's not too over diluted, which I expected. I think you do get diminishing returns when you're shaking a drink because the drink gets colder. So the dilution speed slows down. It's very creamy. And it tastes like a really good espresso martini. I think this actually is my favorite so far. It's well balanced, if a little sweet. I would say there's a little bit too much sweetness, but a lot of people like that in espresso martini, so that's kind of fine. The coffee quality does come through. I do think this is freshly brewed espresso, or at least espresso brewed as espresso and then combined. And this is the best so far. So we're getting really good improvement throughout. You do get a little bit of kind of sediment in the bottle and the murkiness, which like I say, that's probably a good sign from the espresso. Pulled out some of the fats and solids in the coffee. But in the cup, in the glass rather, tastes like a solid espresso martini. So this is five pounds per serve at current pricing, and I'd say 100% worth it. So, so far we are going up broadly in terms of quality. Can we go any further? I don't know, let's try the next one. All right, so next up we have cocktail with a K, world-class cocktails. And this is actually a really interesting one. I took a few notes on this because I have quite a few thoughts. So the description on the website of this is a luxurious mix of the 10 time distilled smooth Wheatley vodka with a splash of Italy's favorite coffee liqueur, Cafe Borghetti, and the wonderful minor figures cold brew coffee. And to me, this is a super weird mix. So I actually tasted, I think 20 coffee liqueurs quite a long time ago, which was intense and a weird night. And I'll link that above so you can watch that if you want to. Strange video, but I had a good time. And Borghetti was one of the ones I tried, and it's a really, let's say, traditional coffee liqueur. It's the biggest selling coffee liqueur in Italy, so I understand. The recipe's from like 1860, and it uses Arabica and Robusta. It's really intense, kind of grassy, robust, rich, dark roast, very sweet, very syrupy. So quite an old fashioned traditional coffee liqueur. And then that's paired with Minor Figures Cold Brew, which is very contemporary, very light, very delicate uses, I think, pretty good coffee in there. And it's just a very conflicting mix of two different products, but opposites attract. So love to be proven wrong. This might be a beautiful, harmonious espresso martini. And this is the second most expensive. So we're coming in at quite a high price point and they recommend chilling this down, shaking it with ice for 10 seconds and serving in a martini glass, which is what we're gonna do now. Looks pretty good, looks a little bit lighter in color, but that's fine, let's not prejudge. So texturally, well, visually, let's say, I've got a much thinner layer of foam this time, quite light in color. It doesn't have a super dark body to the drink either. And let's give it a taste. Yeah, <clears throat> it is all over the place. You've got the really dark roast up front, which is not to my taste. To me, it's quite unpleasant. It's quite medicinal, almost like an oily, petroly kind of thing going on. But then you've got the weird, quite sweet flavor profile as well. In terms of the texture, I think this is actually quite a lot less quality than the last few we've had. Almost everything from three. So the third one we tried, which was the tails all the way through to now. I think this is lighter. I think this is quite lacking. And then balance wise, it's just kind of weird. Like the Borghetti has got such a rich, rough intensity to it that I think the minor figures is kind of lost. Maybe it's bringing texture, I'm not really sure. It isn't crazy sweet, which is a real positive of this. Cause I think if you had the kind of Borghetti plus sugar, it would be way too sweet. But I don't know if they've added any sugar to this and I think that's a really good thing. So sweetness wise, it's okay, but bitterness and like coffee quality is I'd say pretty low. I think the good quality coffee in the minor figures is really overpowered by the more traditional coffee in the Borghetti and definitely not the second best of all the espresso martinis so far. 
I think we've had a pretty reasonable trajectory upwards up until now, but I wouldn't say this is my favorite. I'd say this is in the lower echelons of my preferences. Weird. All right, so last up, we have our most expensive espresso martini, which is Neo Cocktails. Made in Italy, mixed in Italy, I should say. And this has a far higher ABV of 25.7%, which is really quite high for an espresso martini. And a lot of interesting things going on here. So in terms of the ingredients, we have 45% Kettle One Vodka, good stuff. 35% Fair Coffee Liqueur, also good stuff. And this is one of the coffee liqueurs I tasted in that tasting and they use a Mexican Arabica coffee, so a reasonable start. And then we have water as the remaining ingredient. And this level of transparency I really admire, but it also has a few alarm bells kind of ringing. So no espresso, no cold brew, which is not my favorite ingredient in an espresso martini, but something that's often in there. So this is a pretty booze forward drink. And in terms of the way of preparing this, they recommend to shake, pinch the corner and tear, like so, which does work. Kind of expected it not to. And then pour it into a tumbler with ice. So straight away visually, to me, it just doesn't look like an espresso martini. Kind of looks like an old fashioned, doesn't look like a bad drink, just doesn't look like an espresso martini to me. And the final step is on their website, actually no, they recommend here, pouring it into a tumbler and allowing it to chill for one minute. So we will wait for one minute. Cracking view. So one minute later, this is what we have, which just does not look like an espresso martini. Visually, looks like an old fashioned. Texturally, I'm gonna give it a taste, but it seems more old fashioned like to me. It is nice, but it definitely feels like an old fashioned. So don't get me wrong here, this is a delicious drink but it's definitely more of a vodka-based coffee old-fashioned than an espresso martini. They're such different drinks, texturally, flavor-wise, even ingredients-wise, that I don't think you can compare the two. The ingredients are maybe two-thirds of an espresso martini, but it's missing the key element, which is more coffee. So they're not even saying to shake this up, and I don't think even if you shook this, you'd get much texture, but it's a nice drink. I must say, it's a really, really nice drink. It's got plenty of coffee flavor coming through and the coffee quality is good. And the booziness is quite tempered with the ice. So balance wise, I know that the fair coffee liqueur is fairly dry, so it's not too sweet. It's actually a nice balance of sweetness. Some coffee flavor coming through, vodka flavor, but I just can't get past the fact that this just isn't an espresso martini. So it's really admirable that they specify how kind of proportional the ingredients are, so 45% of one, 35% of the other in water. But I just wonder who this is for. So you could make this drink for around about £2.50 by buying those two bottles, mixing them together with those proportions and adding the water. So what you're paying for with the extra £4 is the admittedly amazing branding, the really nice user interface which works really, really well, and the convenience. So if it's worth it for you to pay for that, then that's totally fine. But I just think this drink is delicious but it's just not an espresso martini. But I'm gonna drink some more, because it's a nice change. What I'm gonna do is taste more of the Neo cocktails with the more spirit forward recipes. They do a big range of different drinks, and most of them they recommend either stirring or pouring over ice. And this kind of spirit forward drink could work really well, but an espresso martini I think really needs the shake, it needs the texture, it needs the coffee element. This just doesn't have it. So I'm gonna explore more of this, but now we're gonna head back to the studio, discuss our favorite, discuss whether these cocktails have become better as the price point's gone up, and we're also gonna compare it to a freshly made espresso martini. So, so back to the studio. So to answer that first question, did the quality go up with the price? I'm gonna say no, but there was a kind of trend in the middle ground where I'd say it broadly did. So I'd say one and two, the Funkin' and Fridays were not what I want an espresso martini to be. They didn't have the quality, they didn't have the texture, didn't have the ABV or the mouthfeel. And then at the other end of the spectrum, nine and 10, the cocktail and the Neo, I thought the cocktail just didn't really hit the mark. I thought it was a little bit all over the place. And then the Neo was essentially a vodka based coffee old fashioned or a black Russian. So either ends of the spectrum, I thought kind of missed the mark. But then this middle portion from three to eight, from tails to Myers Fields, really, really impressed me. I thought overall the quality did go up. 
So I thought Tails set a really good starting point with a really solid espresso martini, first introducing that texture, the kind of balance and the coffee quality coming through. I thought Moth took that to the next level with a little bit more intensity, a little bit more body. And then the surprise package for me was the M&S, Marxologist, which had that dark Muscovado sugar, which really brought everything together. And I was kind of surprised by that. And I really, really enjoyed that one. Then we had Clemson's introducing great coffee to the mix, which is really, really important with a bit of traceability and knowing what the coffee is is a really good starting point to build an espresso martini around. I'd say Black Lines took that to the next level by having more of that coffee coming through, a little bit of acidity, which is really nice and a really solid espresso martini. But then we have our winner. So the winner is, should do that now, the Myers Fields. So I was really, really impressed by this. I'm pretty sure this is the only one that had espresso at its base. Some of them may have done, but this was really, really obviously espresso. And I've always said an espresso martini, if it can, should definitely have espresso at its heart. And that's a really important factor. If I'm right, and this is the only one with actual espresso in there, then that kind of verifies my point of espresso martinis need an espresso. But between this little section, this section, three to eight, I was genuinely really, really impressed. And I don't think you can go wrong. I thought they all had really good texture. I thought they were pretty much all a little bit too sweet, but I think that's what you get with ready to drink cocktails. But overall, this was really, really solid. I really enjoyed it. It really was a great espresso martini with all the convenience of having it at home. So now we're gonna take our Marks Fields, compare it to a freshly made espresso martini, and we're gonna look at the quality, but also the value. So let's shake them both up, this one for 30 seconds, as instructed to do, and we'll have a little comparison. So let's shake them up now. So before we shake up the Myers Fields, here's our freshly made espresso martini. Let's have a look at the texture. So you got that really nice cascade, got really kind of nice layer of foam, which kind of initially runs through the whole drink and then settles very slowly. So it's quite persistent. And let's just evaluate the texture first of all, because I think that's really important to do fresh. So here's our freshly made espresso martini. Creamy, moussey, thick, but also light. This is like, the perfect texture for an espresso martini for me. And if you want to see a video all about three tips to make better espresso martinis, I'll put that above. But now let's shake up the Myers Fields for our 30 seconds and then have a look at the texture of that as well. It's an awfully long time. So again, it's looking really, really nice. We've already seen the texture of this is great. And now let's see how that compares to our freshly made espresso martini. So the first thing I noticed comparatively is the kind of top of the drink is a little bit whiter on the ready to drink cocktail but the Cascade's really, really good. Pretty much a perfect looking espresso martini, I'd say. And then texturally, it's definitely lighter than our freshly made espresso martini, but it's got that really nice kind of light creaminess, moussey, can't complain about the texture whatsoever. So this is really, really good. I think you get a little bit of a heavier texture in this, but our ready to drink's pretty damn good. So before we go too deep into the tasting of these and comparing things like the balance and coffee quality, I just want to touch upon the cost. So even if you went to a coffee shop, ordered an espresso and took it home to make your espresso martini, buying spirits for 40 pounds a bottle, which is pretty generous. The cost of this one, your homemade per serve is four pound 20 per serve, give or take. Whereas this one comes in at five pounds per serve. So it's pretty close, but this is marginally more expensive to buy a ready to drink cocktail. Although obviously the convenience factor is a real benefit there. So convenience wise, there's absolutely no comparison between the two. Ready to drink all day long is so much easier just literally pour it in, shake it up, job done, and you've got a really good product. But one thing I should mention is that I actually bought all of these bottles, all 10 of them with my own money. I didn't get any freebies or discounts. I actually ordered them either through Amazon or through the distributors' websites or manufacturers. I'll put links to all of them below in case you wanna pick them up for yourselves. And if you wanna support the channel and help me make more of these videos, then I'll also put my Patreon link below, which is a really good way to access some exclusive content, all sorts of fun stuff, but also really supports the channel and helps me make more of these videos in this style. So all that being said, I think the Redis Drink Espresso Martinis are actually really good value, but obviously homemade, you've got ways you can reduce the cost. Obviously, if you have an espresso machine, you can bring down the cost further. You can buy cheaper spirits if you want to, although I don't necessarily recommend it. And you've got a little bit more flexibility there. So now we've covered value, let's cover quality. And the first thing I wanna talk about when I compare these is balance. So when it comes to balance, the freshly made is designed with my own kind of balance preferences in mind. So this has got the perfect level of sweetness for me, perfect level of coffee, perfect level of booze, a tiny bit of salt in there. And to me, this is perfect. But the reason this is perfect to me is because I made it according to my own taste preferences. And I think that's where the two really separate from each other. 
So with our ready to drink espresso martinis, let's taste this one. Even though it's delicious, I do think this is a little bit sweet, but there's very little you can do to change that. You can't take anything away from this. You can add to it, but as soon as you start adding to it, you lose the convenience. And I think that's where the two really are quite different. So freshly made, you can completely transform the balance to suit your own palate. You can change the amount of coffee, the amount of spirit, the amount of sweetness, a little bit of salt if you want in there. You can change literally every ingredient to find a perfect balance for you. Whereas a ready to drink generally is a little bit sweet, but that might suit you. So if this is perfectly balanced for you, then I think that's the winner. But nine times out of 10, it won't be perfect. And being able to actually make an espresso martini and adjust it according to your own or your guest palates, this one has to be the winner there. So it's also important to note here that these 10 espresso martinis that we've tasted today are the 10 that I got hold of. They're primarily UK based. I know a lot of you watching come from all over the world, which is ridiculously cool. So thank you very much for watching. I do really, really appreciate it. And what I'd like you to do is let me know in the comments below which espresso martinis ready to drink that you've tasted, which ones you've loved, which ones you've been disappointed by, and if there are any that I really do need to try from anywhere in the world, I'd love to try and get hold of them. And a final critical point to make here is that the coffee at the base of our espresso martinis that we've made can be literally any coffee in the world, whatever coffee you love and you can build espresso martinis based on the flavor profiles within the coffee. So we've actually explored this a fair amount on the channel and I'll put a playlist just here with some of my favorite espresso martini variations. And if you wanna learn exactly how I made this espresso martini using my ultimate espresso martini template, I'll put that just here. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. I've really enjoyed making this video. And if you found value in it, you can also subscribe to the channel, which really helps by clicking just here. And however you drink your espresso martinis, whether it be freshly made, ready to drink, I hope you enjoy them. So thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Cheers, everyone. They're both delicious, to be fair.